where we sit there and we start scrolling and it doesn't matter where it's TikTok or Instagram and it seems to go on and on forever and then you look around and you go, oh, I've just lost a half an hour. But it, it, it's actually addictive, isn't it, the way the way there's this infinite scrolling? Uh, because this infinite scrolling uh, is very popular on most of the social media these days. Uh, talk about Twitter or TikTok or Instagram because it makes uh, it very hard for the social media uh, users to delineate uh, with the, what they wish to consume and what they actually consume because we go there with an intent to just scroll for a minute or two and as you rightly said half an hour one hour two hours you you would never even understand or get to know uh, how the time has passed uh, so uh, the whole thing started in the year 2006 when a mathematician by name Azar Ruskin uh, he came out with this technique where they could just keep scrolling and uh, the entire technique was called as pagination but then uh, off lately the social media has uh, introduced this particular feature uh, which makes it very difficult for users to pull out and that's what the social media wants they want user engagement and they use the various metrics to make sure that you get only those content mm. that you're interested in. Uh, they probably look at uh, uh, the geographical location or uh, which are the videos that you've liked earlier or which are the videos that your friends like so that where we sit there and we start scrolling and it doesn't matter where it's TikTok or Instagram and it seems to go on and on forever and then you look around and you go oh, I've just lost a half an hour but it, it, it's actually addictive isn't it the way the way there's this infinite scrolling uh, because it's infinite scrolling uh, is very popular on most of the social media these days uh, talk about Twitter or TikTok or Instagram because it makes uh, it very hard for the social media uh, users to delineate uh, with uh, what they wish to consume and what they actually consume because we go there with an intent to just scroll for a minute or two and as you rightly said half an hour one hour two hours you you would never even understand or get to know uh, how the time has passed. Uh, so uh, the whole thing started in the year 2006 when a mathematician by name Azar Ruskin, uh, he came out with this technique where they could just keep scrolling and uh, the entire technique was called as pagination. But then uh, off lately, the social media has uh, introduced this particular feature, uh, which makes it very difficult for users to pull out. And that's what the social media wants. They want user engagement and they use the various metrics to make sure that you get only those content mm. that you're interested in. Uh, they probably look at uh, uh, the geographical location or uh, which are the videos that you've liked earlier or which are the videos that your friends like so that you've liked earlier or which are the videos that your friends like so that uh, those videos would be shown to you. So these are the various metrics that they're using and uh, this makes it very difficult for people to actually come out of uh, uh, these infinite scrolling. Now, uh, why does this happen is a question uh, which many of them fail to understand because they use a method called as the hook model. Right. So what the hook model does is uh, it uh, uses a trigger, action, reward and an investment so these are the four things that come into picture and uh, whenever you get content uh, that you really like your brain gives you a very small amount of a neurotransmitter called as the dopamine now this dopamine is uh, uh, the feel good factor which makes you feel so good and it makes you get addicted to something and because of that it becomes an infinite loop because uh, it's it's more like you're having a trigger with you and you keep on pressing the trigger so that you keep getting loads and loads of dopamine rush which makes it uh, uh, a very pleasurable experience for you but then uh, at, at what cost is the question because you're not going to gain anything out of it uh, you're only going to lose your time your data and uh, of course uh, the uh, uh, the internet package that you're going to have so these are some of the problems because we have seen productivity loss sensory overload mental health concerns uh, physical health concerns and the uh, unnecessary comparison of our lives with that of others because um, uh, these uh, reels they only show happy stuff they they make you uh, feel that your life is good for nothing mm. and others are having a great time they're enjoying they're on a vacation you see pictures in Maldives you see people buying new cars and having happy relationships now this makes one wonder why is my life so 
boring and why isn't it happening like the others? So unnecessary comparison uh, seeps in. When we're looking at uh, that dopamine kick, I, I am actually old enough to remember a time before smartphones. And I remember a time, it's probably about 10, 12 years ago now, where I'd order a cup of coffee and then you order mm-hmm. it and pay and then you step back and wait. And then I realised after a year or so, I'd, I'd order the coffee and then I'd step back at wait. And previously, you'd sort of just look around and maybe have a chat to the person next to you. Uh, but now it's very much as soon as you order and you step back, one, two, three, brains board, put, get the phone out and start scrolling. And and we, we're, we're, we're losing that sense of wonder and that sense of imagination because there's a constant, constant need to be fixed. And I, I think everything you say is correct, but I'll add to it and say I think it's dramatically affecting people's attention spans. Absolutely. We're seeing a rise in ADHD mm. and uh, uh, there, there is a big problem. Of, I call this as the um, uh, the broken focus syndrome. Okay. Now, this how this works is if you can ask somebody to uh, sit on a chair and do nothing for five minutes, the person starts getting uncomfortable uh, maybe after uh, half, uh, half a minute or one minute. But the same person, if you ask that person to sit on the chair and you give that person a mobile phone and uh, he or she wouldn't mind sitting there for five or six hours even without going to the loo for a break Mm. so this shows uh, the broken focus syndrome that we are uh, facing and uh, especially the student community they are unable to focus uh, uh, with with the lectures because it becomes difficult for them because the lecture is for a duration of one hour or 50 minutes whereas they are so used and addicted to these reels which are hardly 30 seconds or one minute it becomes difficult for them to focus yeah, and also, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, but but also, you know, I, I'm, I'm at the period where I like the fact that, you know, I can remember the world pre-smartphone and I've adapted to smartphones, but, you know, I'm not a parent and I'm not judging parents in any way, but there is a generation of kids uh, that have grown up on the iPads at restaurants and in the back seats of cars. And I speak to a lot of parents and they say, oh, you know, I feel a bit guilty getting the iPad out, but... And, and what do we do? Because I used to watch TV, but you know, we are we are building a, a generation of people that. Um, I, I guess that what you watch on the screen is different. You know, I think most people aren't sitting there reading books on the screen. They're endlessly scrolling and it's this constant, constant track. Uh, have you got any tips for, for many people to maybe try and work out if they have uh, a problem with it? Because I dare say most people aren't going to stop because they don't realise it's already a problem. Absolutely, uh, it's the need of the hour because uh, uh, mindfulness is the is the yeah. right thing that has to come into picture now. Because people are uh, getting so distracted, people are so busy being busy, it's becoming very difficult to actually do something really productive. And uh, for that instance, um, uh, the iOS and Android uh, they have uh, performed some steps in this direction mm. by launching uh, use time and digital well-being. So uh, these allow the use users to motorize and understand how much time they're actually uh, spending uh, glued to their phones. But as you have rightly said, uh, without uh, the previous user awareness about the problem, it becomes very difficult and it would not be of any help because these uh, uh, screen monitoring apps, they would only tell you uh, how much time you have used your phones or uh, they may lock your screens after a certain period, but that wouldn't stop you from taking one more phone and using the same thing. Uh, So it it comes with the self-awareness and that's that's the key over here. Yeah, I think screen time is is, is a very, very good thing when you sit there and you realise you've been looking at your screen for six or seven hours in a day you think, what what do I do for the other time? What a waste of time that I've been doing. So I think that is uh, very advantageous when it comes down to uh, a, a trick when, when you're curbing these issues. Um, but for, but for, for many people, I think it is also very hard because for many of us, specifically in Dubai, which is a visual city, you know, reels and people's content on Instagram, particularly like us in the media, it is also our job as well. And I think that's where it becomes hard. You can't really have a digital detox because so much of our jobs and our lives revolves around this social content. Absolutely. Uh, I totally agree with what you say. As long as the content that you're going through is of, uh, um, uh, it's going to make your life better or it's going to add value, yeah. then I, I see no problem in this because you're doing something uh, better. But then uh, if, if the content is about negativity, if the content is about uh, uh, something to do with uh, uh, anti-social uh, activities, Behavior. then yeah. that is where the problem uh, starts, actually. So therefore, we have to be 
very mindful uh, with regard to what we are watching because what we watch those are our thoughts our thoughts they they become our behavioral patterns and the behavioral patterns turn into actions so we have to be very careful about what we feed uh, into our brain so it's very important uh, to only go through those contents that would make us a better person Doctor, I do find it addictive whenever I see bulldogs that ride skateboards. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> whenever I see the bulldogs on the skateboards, oh, I'm gone. I'm, 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 I've got to look up all the dogs I possibly can. So I think we all have that one weakness uh, of a video sometimes on social media uh, that's able to do that. But, you know, I think we all also need to practice self-awareness, mindfulness. They're great, great tips. And maybe the, the better question is to ask your your, your family or your friends or those that live with you just to try and watch mm-hmm. out and be mindful about how often I might get lost uh, on, on the endless scrolling on social applications. Absolutely, because that's that's uh, that's the problem. So when when somebody tells me that you are using your phone for a very long time, or when I tell that to somebody else, they get offended. They they yeah. start uh, feeling uncomfortable. So uh, th- this has become the new normal now. You you go anywhere, you see people. Everybody is so glued onto their phones. They are just scrolling. If they even use their phones when they're crossing the roads yeah. or when they are uh, traveling. Instead of looking outside and enjoying the uh, the scene scenery, uh, they all they do is they are are so much glued onto their phones. So the digital uh, life has become an integral part of our uh, real life. That's the problem right now. Yeah, I, I, now, I don't know whether you're correct or we're just getting old. <laughs> maybe, there's, <laughs> maybe, there's, maybe there's some of that as well. But look, it, it's a great topic and I'm sure it's one that we are going to revisit uh, in, in the coming weeks and months. Dr. Anath Prabhu, uh, thank you very much for sharing your insights. It's always great to have you on Talk 100.3. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and I'm so glad that you've brought out this topic because I'm pretty sure that with the, the wide uh, uh, array of users, uh, listeners that are there uh, listening to your wonderful programs, <laughs> I'm sure that it would make a difference in their lives and they would start being more productive. Yeah, well, I've got to play some news so I can look at more dogs on my phone. So, uh, Doctor, and thank you very much for joining us <laughs> on, on Talk 100.3. And how are you finding that? Are you finding yourself getting stuck? When you're scrolling on certain certain applications, which application is the worst for you? Is it Reels? Is it is it TikTok? TikTok is probably the worst if you are a TikTok user. And if you do get stuck, what is it that always seems to lure you in? For me, as I said, bulldogs on skateboards. It's the best thing on the internet. But what is it about sometimes with videos that always seem to hook you in? Or have you ever had to have a position where you've maybe had to have a conversation with a family member or a friend to say, hey, I think you're getting lost on your phone. Hey, stay present in the room. Or have you ever had to ask someone for help? 058686.